Hello, lovely people. How are you doing on this amazing day? Um, welcome to um, your Yoga Solutions live broadcast on this, the sunniest of Tuesdays, the 19th of May 2020. Yes, I hope you're having a fantastic time wherever you are. And um, yes, uh, what to say really? Um, don't know. I haven't, haven't got, had a chance to practice today. Uh, but um, oh, I seem to have be having trouble transmitting. Let, let, let's, um, let's see what's going on with this. Okay, well, I'll just carry on as, as usual. I think it will resume at some point, hopefully. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so I've been, I've been busy in the garden, actually, um, alongside um, all the online stuff. Um, I've been having time, I've been ta using my time out to, um, to get in the garden and get into nature and um, get my hands dirty, you know, which is um, always good for me to do. Uh, yes, I'm a bit concerned that um, this is not working. Let me let me just try having a look on another computer, see if that's happening. Um, is there anything going on here? Yeah, it, it seems to be working. Okay, so it's just a bit confusing on my other computer, saying it's not working. All right, well I'll, I'll just um, <laughs> I'll just carry on as usual. So put it back to normal. Um, <coughs> yes, I've been I've been digging the garden. I've been making ponds. I've been um, hardcore weeding, landscaping, all sorts of things. Um, it's really good for me to get down and dirty in the earth, as well as um, these sort of um, higher frequency things that I'm exploring uh, in my meditation and practice and breathing practice and things. It, it's really nice to to work at. At all frequencies, if you like, I'm I'm experiencing a sort of multi-layered thing at the moment, where I'm sort of looking at the world from all the different levels, and I and I presume this is uh, what is meant by different chakra consciousnesses, consciousness, consciousnesses as well. Um, yeah, that's that's my experience anyway. So, uh, what to say? Uh, what to do? Let's practice. Uh, I haven't, like I said, I haven't practiced yet, so um, let's have a practice together. I'll change the scene. Uh, yeah, that'll do. Um, I think, what should we do today? Let, let's start in child's pose. That's what I feel like doing. So, my version of child's pose doesn't have the arms behind. Um, just because uh, the way um, people hang their shoulders off their neck, it's not, it's not very nice for the spine, uh, for me anyway. Um, so I'm going to have my arms forwards. Uh, and there's always a, a beauty in, that can arise when you approach a posture, approach the asana, the comfortable seat, with care. There's a little quote in... Um, Vanda's book around uh, arriving in postures like a, like a bumblebee settling on a flower to find the nectar. And that's quite a good description of um, setting correct intent. You know, if, if you're looking for the pleasure in the approach, niceness, then you'll quite naturally listen to the body in terms of making things comfortable as you go and, and the movements, the cyclic movements, the circular movements are much more honouring of the joints and the spine so that when we finally arrive you can settle into the comfort of contact because every single part of you has found a relationship to support that doesn't rely on any joint being compromised. So, you know, as I, as I was descending, I wasn't thinking about 
um, the right movement for my joints. I was simply arriving circuitously and in no rush to get anything to anywhere. Just looking at the quality of my experience as I moved and the outcome is a much deeper sense of release because I am supported through my bones. So just then I brought my arms in a bit closer so that when I lean out again I get supported through my shoulders rather than my shoulders hanging off my back. And uh, the outcome is that when I follow the rise and fall of the breath, no part of me is trapped. You know, um, the, when we when we try and sit heavily on our uh, heels, uh, then usually the base of the spine is trapped and breath is restricted to the upper back. But with this lightness of approach, the intent of being supported through our bones as we rest outwards into touch we get a reciprocal sense of support back through our bones and joints so that everything feeds into the spine allowing the spine to be at the center of the breath and movement so even though, even though this is a flexion movement I'm not hanging off my back which means that the uh, I get the usual releases around the lower back for the uh, as the breath arrives even more so because the pelvic floor isn't trapped. The breath arrives um, at my base, in my back, and because I've taken care with how the head is sitting on the ground so that resting through my forehead and leaning out through that contact beyond it gives me a feeling of support back through my spine. So, yes, the back and the neck are touched by the breath, but when I release, I can release into contact. Instead of being heavy towards the ground, I am supported back from it. So that the upper spine gets a chance to drop through. And that's the elongating feeling that we all look for, I think, in our practice. So I'm enjoying this too much to jump out of it. I'm going to have a few breaths, sourcing the arrival of the breath in the ground. It's always a good thing to do. And then releasing the breath back to my centre, which is kind of the centre of my uh, my uh, entry level pranayama course I'm building. So it's the beginning of it anyway. So now things have relaxed in the back and uh, and my, my front, my core, um, is not feeling heavy. It's kind of emptying away from the ground as I release the breath. I'm going to get involved with um, my active touch of my hands to see if that can support my shoulders away from the ground. So the hands go down, elbows and shoulders come up. And the, if I, the intent is not to lift myself anywhere, but to just explore how the touch down and slightly away from me through my hands supports back through me so that I can continue to relax the spine and continue to allow the breath to touch the back of the spine to support me. And then when I release the breath, the upper spine can continue to drop through, but this time it's a bit more to my hands. If I was someone that was used to lifting with my back, then the belly would be beginning to become heavy. Uh, it is a tendency in me. So um, a way of redressing that heaviness in the back and belly is to get involved with a touch of the knees and feet on the ground, the shins, particularly with the out breath to help the core responses. And then if I can use the contact of the feet to move myself, I'll be on all fours without disturbing the upper spine relationship to the hand. Get my, my feet ready to take weight, but I'm not going to push back against my toes. First of all, I want to get connected to my feet. So I'm going to press vertically down through the tips of the big toes. And instantly I get a deep response in the lower belly. So I, I won't have the, the usual problem of uh, lifting or dropping from the uh, sacral lumbar junction. 
so I can get some internal support from the touch of the big toes that is I think it's related to Mula Banda because something deep in the lower belly works to support me from within the touch of the knees if I engage with that I get support in the core of the body so the upper belly starts to be supported away from the ground which means my thoracic lumbar junction can relax the hands going down help the head float and the chest feels supported away from the ground. So I'm working quite hard, it might not look like it, but I'm working quite hard with my contact so that the front of my body is supported away from the ground. But I'm not pulling, I'm not trying to help by lifting myself away from the ground with the back. I'm allowing the spine to drop through to that support. So basically I'm coming together front to back, back to front, because I give my weight to my touch. And although I'm, I'm moving around kind of randomly, I'm, I'm doing that to, to stop myself from sort of fixing myself in space as I continue to work with the downness of my contact. So that I can, so I'm moving from a free spine and a supported core. And if I can play with this, so that I can, I arrive from my hands, and then when I release the breath, I can decide to transfer from the knees to releasing the toes and being on the, on the fronts of the feet. So the situation has changed. I feel a little bit heavy in the chest. So, once again, I'm going to get involved in my touch. Downward touch through the hands, through where the feet touch the ground, and that helps support the front of the body away from the ground. But, I want the spine itself to be as relaxed as it was in child's pose, which involves not pushing the ribs down, but continuing to feel supported by my touch, so the core of the body is supported away from the ground, including the ribs including the brain, the face. As I breathe with that support, the breath will arrive in the back of me. And as I release the breath through that support, in, in conjunction with that support, the spine can drop, and I'm talking about the rounded parts of the spine, between shoulder blades, to the hands, not beyond, so that I'm heavy, but to the hands, so that the breastbone, chest and upper spine come together and that opening is the source of me elongating from the spine to my feet. So there's no particular urgency to get the heels to the ground. I'm more interested in being supported by where the feet are, which includes the heels in space. Now if I've got the arrangement and relationships with things correct, then in principle I should be able to let go of tension to breathe. So I'll give that a go. I'll give to my touch and I breathe. That's worked. And if I've got it just so, in terms of through myself, then when I release the breath, what will happen is the upper spine opens up and I continue to open out in all directions which includes the heels growing away from the emptying core of the body. And the upper spine leans through to the hands. Yes, so that was nice. Uh, what do I want to do now? Let's see. Let's have a little rest. Arriving with as much care, it doesn't take as much time because the body's more integrated. And I'm just checking in with myself for a few breaths. So I'm going to have another go. So today it seems like I'm, I'm sort of sharing with you my own process when I practice. So from once again from a relaxed state 
I want to feel supported by my own contact to the ground. So my hands go down and I don't do anything to lift, but I allow myself to come away from the ground. With that feeling of the upper spine dropping through to contact is uh, primary for me, for most people in fact. And then using the touch of the knees, the shins, the feet to feel supported in the lower half of the body, away from the ground in the belly. Moving with that support, taking a breath over my hands. Am I through my toes? Yes, I am. I've got a nice deep lower belly response. So I can, from being on my hands, through my hands, I can breathe and release the breath through too contact with the feet, I take another breath and I release through my contact to the ground and beyond through fingers and toes. So that was more simple the second time. Still a bit of refinement. See if I can trust the ground and the space all around me to receive the breath so that I can release back to the heart from those things and then open out from the spine behind the heart, back into my contact and beyond. I'm going to try coming onto the tops of the feet. Because it's the beginning of a movement into cobra or face up dog. The tops of the feet um, being down helps the front of the body feel really quite light. As long as I'm through, not just pushing against my toes. And then I can find a kind of wave through the bones of that that allows me to come through and up. So I meet the space behind the arms so I can relax the body into a opening from the heart. Now I'm going to come back onto the tops of my feet because I'm feeling a little bit stranded in the lower back. That helps the core responsiveness and allows me to release back into dog. What do I want to do now? I'm not sure. I want to mix it up a bit. So I'm playing with side to side. Excuse my t-shirt. Playing with side to side because I want to get a bit more I don't know, expansive, expressive. What can I do with this? Let's see. So I'm getting into the sort of rhythmic flow of things now because I found a way of uh, letting go through myself into touch and from touch through space. Each release of the breath can become an opening from the heart. So I want to try it out in different situations. of a challenge. I quite like that. Let's come back. Let's try the other side. You know, this through the bones thing, it's a very useful way of understanding support. Um, most people are busy kind of working out how to hold themselves up in postures, which is about how you hold the structure. I'm more interested in how the structure can support me so I can let go through it from the heart. So I get an experience of lightness. Um, you know, muscles do stuff, of course. I'm not saying we don't use muscles. But what I'm saying, what they're supposed to do is organize things so that from so that when we let go into contact, the forces of support travel through our bones, through the core of the body, so that the spine doesn't have to carry a weight. And ideally, to the center of the release of the breath between the lungs, the heart. And when that happens, as I explained in um, what was it, child pose, the whole body can grow out into 
space from contact because of that release. So we let go of tension into support. I can't remember what that one's called. If anyone knows, let me know. I don't think I've seen it in any um, ancient yoga books. But it's certainly a posture. So through the toes will help support through my hips. Um, the one that's away from the camera is the one that has to do the work, because that's the heavy side at the moment. Through the fingers helps support back through my shoulders. Inside of that I've got a rib cage that breathes and releases the breath towards the heart. Away from the legs I've got a core um, behind which breathes because I'm supported by my feet. And when I release the breath, it releases up through the core. So the two together, it's a sort of coming together behind the heart. It allows me to let go of tension to contact and open out. Very nice. Hmm, that'll do me. <sighs> I enjoyed that. Um, oh, hi, Dale. Nice to see you. <sighs> so, I had no idea what I was going to do. I just started with where I wanted to be and where I wanted to be changed as my body responded to looking after myself in the situation that I was in. <sighs> I suppose it helps to have a um, few ideas of where you can go. So that's what postures are for, I suppose. But for me, that's yoga practice. The direct inquiry into what is in this moment and a willingness to allow what is to continuously change, because it does. Every time you take a breath, things change. And every time you release the breath, things change. And if you're willing to see if the body can respond to those things in movement, then you start to harmonize your movement with the ebb and flow of the breath. So, there you go. Ah, that'll do me. I, I, I don't really have much more to say about it. I was just in, had a nice little practice. So, I, I don't know if that was interesting for people because um, no, I wasn't answering anyone's questions. I was just um, answering my own, really. What do I feel like doing? And um, for me, it leads to rather satisfying practice between total relaxation through to full expression of movement, and including some challenges to my own sense of what support means and other things. Good. Oh, I'm glad you joined me. Um, DL. So, um, yes, so let me tell you, uh, let me let you know what I've got going on. I, I've got a lot going on right now. It's, uh, I'm getting the cal calendar up so I can see. Um, so this, uh, well, I've got my classes later on today, um, 11.30 uh, and 6.30 p.m. Uh, 12 pounds to drop in, or if you don't want me to watch you, you can use the view-only code and get it for half price and, and watch from the sidelines a bit. Um, yes, that's uh, 11.30, well, soon after this, and then 6.30 this evening. Uh, and tomorrow morning at 11, I do, I do another one. Uh, they're all 75 minutes, so an hour's yoga and 15 minutes. Deep relaxation, I, I found the adding of the 15 minutes at the end to help integrate things for people is probably the most powerful part. Um, you know, it's all one and good learning stuff and doing stuff and experiencing stuff, but we need it integrated in our bodies and the deep relaxation part. Um, I, I use to, um, to sort of anchor the themes that we've been working with because uh, what I work with is, is relationships and um, it's much easier to sense a relationship when you're not busy doing it. 
Uh, it's much more. It's much easier to to feel it when you're relaxed. When you're relaxed, and um, having created the conditions that are, have awoken those relationships in the deep relaxation, you get a chance to just feel it, experience it um, through breath and its release. So I've yeah started including including extra 15 minute relaxations at the end of sessions. So it's Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Uh, Thursday I've got my la the last of my core intelligence live. Um, course workshop, uh, which means that the uh, recorded version will then be complete a couple of days after, um, which you can you can purchase and take part in. And um, if you do so, uh, there's two versions. You can just get the information and content, the the live recordings, and um, with a sort of featured video of the teaching. Uh, and you get that for a, um, I think, an excellent value. It's um, proper CBD stuff. Um, and if you want to, to really be supported in the process, uh, then uh, there's, a, there's a version that gets you three one-to-ones with the course that you can take any time over a year. And um, uh, I, you know, if, if you really want to um, make the most of it, I, I would go for the one with the one-to-ones because, um, you know, it's, uh, I, I can guide you into, into a somatic understanding directly rather than intellectual and um, somatic understanding is where the, where the actual truth is rather than the um, ideas. So um, yeah, that's, that's on Thursday, uh, so I don't know why I told you that you can't actually join it but you can sign up for any of the sensory intelligence courses and get involved. Saturday 23rd I've got my two hour Saturday morning retreat. Um, retreat as in treat yourself again <laughs> uh, they're, they're turning out to be gentle flow classes um, sometimes a bit stronger than others uh, that that would be considered as a gentle flow I guess in most yoga circles um, it can be quite intense but um, there's always time for deep relaxation and uh, they're, they're, they're very, very nice workshops um, they're, they're limited to um, I can't remember how many for, for life places and places to go fast because um, gold members get a spot for free on that. And um, so if you want a place you can book up, I'll do so sooner rather than later. And following weekend, let's see. Yes, following weekend. Saturday 30th and 31st, I'm going to do um, a, a weekend retreat. That's a, a, a proper sort of... Um, sandwiching of the day with uh, a morning two and a half hour session which gives us time to get together and tune into what we want to work with um, uh, a good practice session with the tea break mid midway because it's a two and a half hour thing and a proper deep relaxation at the end and then that's in the morning up until lunchtime i'll leave the meeting open so that people can chat and practice together if they like um, for, from lunchtime all the way through till 4.45 when we reconvene to, uh, with questions and answers. Um, so, you know, if, if people are practicing with the content of the morning, um, I will be there directly to answer any questions and uh, if there's a bit of space and time and inclination, <laughs> we can apply the thing in practice a little just to um, see if it makes sense of my answers. And then uh, again, a, a deep relaxation to set you up for the evening. And um, the theme of the Saturday on, on, on the 30th, the bank holiday weekend, the theme on the Saturday is um, uh, relaxed strength in day-to-day -day life and how, how to bring the, this quality of yoga practice to your daily life. And the, the theme of the Sunday morning is 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 restorative now i've got my own particular take on restorative which is actually sort of touched on <laughs> in my own practice around um putting yourself together as in the, the body doesn't uh, most restorative practices are about sort of relaxing and stretching the the tissue uh, allowing the tissue to stretch over time uh, i don't uh, it's not quite, it's not how I understand things and um, uh, to my experience doing so uh, le leaves a person heavy and un kind of unsupported so they get tired 
Um, my, my restorative has a different intent. It's, a, it's about resting into yourself so that you rest as a whole being. And then the tissue around joints and other things can start to relax, which is why we're trying to stretch the stuff in the first place. We want it to relax. But if you put yourself together uh, structurally and give yourself some time, uh, a bit like I did in my child pose, um, then you can relax and you're not doing anything detrimental to the body by, by uh, the usual thing of hanging off it. And uh, what you end up with is a body that is kind of integrated and relaxed. And um, it's quite incredible the amount of internal space you feel when the body isn't busy holding you together. So, uh, the Sunday will be my deep restorative, uh, is, that, is that too many T's? <laughs> it's my deep restorative uh, approach to things. So it'll be, um, yes, some gentle uh, relaxing postures. And that, that, so that's the bank holiday weekend, two days, dirt cheap, dirt cheap. Um, 77 pounds for both days. And um, you can turn up as you please. There's only uh, there's a maximum of 15 live places. I think three have gone already. Um, uh, uh, but uh, again, you can you can sign up for cheaper. I think uh, for quite a bit cheaper if you just want to watch um, in the background a bit, have a have a view only place. So that's bank holiday weekend. Um, sorry if this is lots of stuff, but I feel like I'm, I should share it with you. Um, okay, so the following weekend I've got another Saturday morning uh, flow to our class, and then on the Sunday we have, uh, sorry, as a neighbours, on the Sunday um, I'm doing a, an intro workshop, a two hour intro work, workshop that I've only just got the link for, uh, with Tuesday McNeil, and it's an introductory workshop for a British Wheel Foundation course that starts the following Sunday. Uh, it's just £20 to join and it will give you an overview of what to expect. So anyone that is looking for a, um, a foundation, a, a foundation training course online, um, this is, I think, one of the first uh, British Wheel sanctioned um, foundation courses and it'll be running over 10, ten sessions over, over, ten, over, well, up until December. Um, so it'll be, it's done before Christmas and uh, yes that, you'll get details from that directly from Tuesday I'll, I, will send, I will add the link to this after when I've um, closed down the, the broadcast so that's on Sunday the 7th of June uh, yes and then the um, foundation course is the following Sunday and I'll be doing some other online retreats, I think, as I've got yoga in the garden booked. But um, if, I presume that we're, we're going to be still a bit cautious, if not on actual lockdown. So I might do some more online retreats if they go well. On Sunday the 28th of June, I'm doing an ongoing training day for Yoga Scotland. And it's um, change, your, change Perspective, Transform Your Practice. It's a full day. And it's worth 7.5 uh, ongoing training points with yoga, for, for Yoga Scotland um, members. And uh, they've made it a good price. It's now uh, £40 for the day and uh, well, £35 for, for Yoga Scotland members. That's on June 28th, and that's probably enough. Uh, you don't need to need any more than that. Um, need to know any more than that. I've got lots going on. Um, and I've got my, um, my pranayama course, my intermediate pranayama course, is already up and available, the Sacred Breath one. And I'm in the process of uh, completing an entry-level course that will be free to anyone that purchases the Sacred Breath before I get this one out. Um, when it's out it'll be its own course and um, uh, yes it's, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a breath work course that will um, light a fire under your understanding of things if you already know about pranayama and already practice it uh, but it's also entry level so it's um, so totally available to absolutely anyone and it, that wants to make friends with their breath so, and it's called the, the, the breath your friend <laughs> So that's me. Um, yeah, I hope uh, you enjoyed 
that session and if you did then feel free to share it whilst it's still up on Facebook and um, yes I shall see you at the same time same place next week um, much love bye now